I want to welcome all of you guys online. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for joining us here. It's been a couple weeks, so we're kind of fumbling around, finding ourselves back uh, into the groove here. And uh, so last week we had, uh, well, last time we were together, we kind of went over our vision and why we're here and what we're doing, what we're trying to accomplish. And <clears throat> let me get on the t- slide here. And, uh, and the reason for that was is because we got, believe that God has given us the green light to start looking for a place. Amen. Start looking for a place that's more public. Uh, we talked about a little bit about, uh, you know, we've had a lot of searches online through Google, uh, people trying to find us. And uh, we, <laughs> we found out that our picture on Google, on the Google ad, was the empty lot next door. So people who are trying to find us were seeing the empty lot next door. So, um, so I believe that once we get to that place, uh, uh, the God has given us the green light to start shopping and start looking. Uh, <clears throat> there are some rules that we kind of have to follow with Rama, is that we have to be a certain distance away from another Rama church. And there are two other Rama churches here in town. And all of you, I know all of you are familiar with what word and season. And then there is, uh, and they're down there on Pima. And uh, the other one is Zoe, which is a Hispanic church. And they're down in South Tucson. So that leaves us with either the Northwest or the Southeast. So we'll be uh, kind of leading, looking to be led in that direction. Uh, the North, I don't have any leading to go to like Oracle or anything like that. Um, so we're probably going to be looking around Oracle, somewhere on Oracle, um, maybe around the Tucson Mall, something like that. Or in the southeast, we'll probably be down by Houghton and Irvington. That's kind of the, the junction where uh, we stay out of the range of word and season. Right? So, uh, because we don't want to interfere with what God's doing in another church. Right? And so uh, Ramos had a history of people who have started churches and they went and they moved their church like a mile down from the church that they were previously going to. That's obviously not a good thing, right? I mean, you're, that's, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit because you're actually dividing, right? You're actually dividing what God is doing. And so we don't want to do that. And so we want to kind of position ourselves where God wants us to be, amen? And we can reach the most people and, uh, and we'll be a blessing, amen? So anyway, that's, a, that's what that's all about. That's what we're looking at. That's where we are. So I'm excited for that, man. I can't wait. You know, finally to be able, we'll start to be able to do some advertising. You know, we'll get our website up. We'll get everything going. And uh, we'll get some flyers out. And we'll get start inviting some people in. And uh, we'll, we'll, I believe we'll have a, <clears throat> a lot greater opportunities. Amen? So, so anyway, let's get to our sermon today. This is our last message on this one. I thought part four was our last message. But <clears throat> this one ended up being our last message. as dominion over darkness, safe in him safe in him now <clears throat> now our purpose today is not to go over everything that we've already gone over but uh, <clears throat> because uh, for those of you who have not been following us online I would encourage you to go back and look at the previous four that we've done on this message uh, on this topic and uh, kind of see where we've gone I mean, we've covered a lot of territory on this have we not I mean we've covered a lot um, but uh, and so just to get our hearts and our minds kind of back into the flow of the subject, we'll do a brief, brief review, and then we'll get into what God wants for us today. Amen? So, so if you'll remember, we talked about how Jesus Christ had conquered the devil, right? We had conquered the forces of darkness, that there is no devil, there is no demon, there is no force, uh, any, any unclean spirit that is not under the authority of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross... And he took the sin upon himself on the cross. That was the day and that was the hour where he defeated Satan. And we read and we went through the word of God and we found out that the word of God says that Jesus had disarmed. He had dethroned. He had completely annihilated Satan's kingdom. Amen. And so that Jesus now, uh, when he had died on that cross, God the Father raised him up. Right? Raised him up and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And we found out that that place, the right hand, what that signified and what that represented, it was a place of honor and a place of authority. Now, I know a lot of people can struggle with, well, what does that really mean, sitting at the right hand of God? And uh, a good explanation of that, a good type of that, 
is found in Joseph and Pharaoh. You guys remember the story of Joseph and Pharaoh? And so we know that in that story that Pharaoh had elevated Joseph. You know, he had put all authority and dominion of, of Egypt under Joseph, right, except for Pharaoh himself, right? And so that is, that is seating somebody at your right hand. So that means Joseph was seated at the right hand of Pharaoh. And so that all of Egypt was answerable to Joseph. And Pharaoh put him in that position. And so that was the same thing. That's the same kind of vision of God setting Jesus Christ at his own right hand. Is that he elevated Jesus and he made all creation. Everything that God had created made it subject to him. Amen. So everything, all principalities, all powers, all authorities, all rules, all dominions are subject to Christ. Not just the fallen angels, but also the heavenly angels. So everything, all of creation, everything is subject to Jesus Christ. And then we went on to read that God wasn't done yet, and he, God also raised us up together with Christ. And that God set us in Christ and seated us with Christ at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, that can seem kind of obscure, too. So what does that mean that we're seated with Christ in that place of honor and in that place of authority? I'm talking about the body of Christ. We all were. Amen. The whole body of Christ was raised up and seated with Christ. Not one Christian left out. Everybody. Everybody. That God placed us in Christ at his own right hand. And as you kind of think of, get a visual of that, think of it as like you are sitting at a big oval table. Right? We're all sitting at the oval table, and Jesus is the head. He's sitting at the head of the table. Amen? So we are all part. That's what it means. We are seated with him. We are together with him, seated at the same table that he's seated at, but he is the head of the table. You know, the word of God says that he is the head, we are the body. Right? He is the head, we are the body. So we follow him, we subject to him. And, uh, you know, and usually when you see someone sitting at the head of a table, you know, in, in our tradition, even, that's, some, that's a place of honor, isn't it? That, that's the place where the person who leads everything sits, right? It's usually the, the, the spirit, what we would say, the, the authority in the house sits at the head of the table. Is that right? Amen? I mean, traditionally, right? Traditionally. I don't know so much anymore, but uh, it used to be the way it used to be. So, so, so that's what it means to be seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And then we learn that Jesus Christ then, after he was raised with, seated at the right hand of God, gave us the keys. He gave us the keys to the kingdom of God. And that key represented the authority. The authority of the kingdom of God was given to us. And we know that key is, is represented through the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ is the key to the kingdom of heaven. And we saw that Jesus gave us that key. We saw that in Matthew 18. And uh, I'm dealing with my sinuses a little bit today, so you have to give, uh, please be patient with me a little bit. A little allergies, allergies acting up. But, uh, <clears throat> but so if we were to execute this authority that has been given to us, we are to do it through the name of Jesus. Amen? Because the name of Jesus represents all the power and all the authority and all the dominion of the kingdom of God. Amen? From the throne of God, and so if we, want to, if we want to establish, if we want to release that authority in our lives, we use the name of Jesus. And then also we went on to show how we use that name. How do we use the name of Jesus correctly? And, uh, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of us, myself included, for a long time, have found ourselves trying to struggle to, you're trying to do something. You're trying to exert some kind of power. You're trying to exert some kind of authority. And that's not the correct way we use the name of Jesus. We looked at that in John 14, that Jesus said, whatever you demand or whatever you require in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Amen. I will do it. He said he would do it. Amen. So when you speak to a sickness or disease in the name of Jesus, Jesus is going to do it. And that's where our faith is in. Will he do what I, when I, when I speak to that thing, will he perform it? And now we're not telling Jesus what to do or we're not trying to command things from God. No, Jesus is saying, you speak it, I'll do it. All right? That's how he set it up. He says, you use my authority and I'll do it. Amen? So, so really, we are demanding and we are requiring of the devil. We are demanding and requiring our rights as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. 
right? That the authority that has been given to us, the authority that we have been authorized to use, he is saying, you use it, I will do it. Amen. And so that's where our faith should lie in him. In him. Amen. So we talked about, we showed a little example of that in Acts, how the disciples used the name of Jesus, and they said, why look at us, right? Why, why look at us like we're some, somebody? We're not. It was him who did it. It was Jesus. So it was Jesus who was still healing after his resurrection, right? We saw Jesus in the Gospels healing, but it's still Jesus healing through his name, through his name. Amen. So, and same thing when you speak to the devil. It's he who will cause him to flee. Amen. So we're not trying to do anything. All right, so going on today, getting into our subject, we, we're going to take a, kind of take a step further and see that God, not only has he done all this for us, but that God off, also offers a protection for his children. Not only have we been delivered, we've been separated. Colossians 1.13 says we have been separated from the kingdom of darkness and transferred and re- conveyed over into the kingdom of the Son of God, or the, king of, the kingdom of God. So not only have you been taken out from under the authority of darkness and moved somewhere else, and not only have we been raised to seat with, seated with Christ in heavenly places, and not only have we been given authority over darkness and over all the forms of evil and all forms of devils and demons and all of that kind of stuff, but then God also says, I am also a protector. I also will shield you. I will keep you from the evil one. Amen. And uh, I was quite uh, astonished about how many verses in the Bible actually talk about this. Because I thought, sure, yeah, there's a couple, you know, there's a few, two or three out there that talk about this. But there's quite a few. And it really has a lot to say. And the one, the scripture that you read, I don't have in my sermon today. But it was good. It was really good. I thought that was perfect for what we're covering today. And um, you preached half my sermon, so I know we're on the right track. So, (laughs) amen. So, amen. Right. So, so our purpose today is we're, we, are to, we want to eliminate all fear. We want to eliminate all worry or concern about the devil whatsoever. Because when we know the truth, the truth will set you free. Amen. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear about him when you know what God has done. Amen. So that's a lot of reasons why we're going through this. And, uh, and one of the reasons that, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, one of the things that we can be tempted to fear at times is... Uh, we just we think that the devil can just come into our lives and he can just kill seal and destroy right he can just come into your lives he can take you over he can take over your finances he can destroy whatever he wants you know at any time that he wants to do it he can just come in and do it and that is a big misconception in the church and uh and the one of the reasons we want to tackle this is is because uh it, it leads to a trap all right so this is what the devil wants you to believe he wants you to believe that he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's not true. And so you can prove that by asking yourself a simple question. If the devil could just come into your life and just take you over and just take over your finances, your cars, and just do whatever he wants to do, why hasn't he already? Why hasn't he already? He, do you think he's just waiting for a good day? No. No, He's because he can't. He can't because you have a protector. Amen. You have a shield that prohibits him from just coming into your life and doing that. Amen. He can't do it. Amen. He, like Keith Moore says, he's not big enough. <laughs> Amen. He's not big enough just to march into your life and take over your life. He can't. And he can't even do it with unbelievers. Right? And so I think we get too much credit to the devil and what his abilities are. You know, the devil, he is a fallen angel. He is a created being who has fallen. And, uh, and uh, I think a lot of the movies and all the stuff that we see uh, nowadays, it's, just, it's, not, it's not an ounce of truth in any of that. In all those horror movies and stuff, it's, there's not an ounce of truth in that. Who, that's what the devil is like. The devil would like to think that he would like you to think that's the way he's like, but that's not how he really is. Amen. So, so, uh, so yeah, so be assured that you have a protection from God that keeps him out of your life. Now, that doesn't mean that he is not going to try to come into your life. And I think this is where many Christians fail, is they don't, uh, they don't realize that, you know, you know, just because he's trying to get into your life doesn't mean you have to let him. Right? You, don't, you don't have to let him. And so what we're doing today is we're arming ourselves with knowledge. We're arming ourselves with the truth 
so we can keep him out of our lives forever. Amen? Forever. For as long as you're down here on this earth, you can keep him out of your life. Amen? It's possible. And then also, if you build it up strong enough in yourself, you can start to help others. You can start praying for others. You can start having confidence in this thing and say, hey, you know what? I see what you're going through. I can help you with that. Let's stand in faith. Let's stand in agreement on this thing, and let's kick that devil out of this situation. Amen? And so, uh, and so there's a lot of good things that we can uh, glean from this, uh, from this message today, uh, or this truth about what God has done. So we go here to 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says here, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now there's two good and very comforting things in this scripture that we should be rejoicing over. First of all is that the, that the devil is what he is seeking. He is seeking. So that means that he can't find everybody. There are some people he cannot find. Amen? Right. So some people he cannot just not see. Amen? And so, and so that's very comforting to us. And we're going to get it to it a little bit later. But those whom he cannot find are those who dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Those are the ones he cannot find. Hallelujah. And then also, what the second thing that's comforting about this is that whom he may devour. Whom he may. So there are some people, this tells us, that there are some people he cannot devour. Even if he finds them, even if he, you know, he's, he's seeking and he finds them, he still cannot devour them. Amen. Why? Because the greater one. Amen. And that's the only reason. Because the greater one in us, greater is he who's in the world, or greater is he who is in us than he who's in the world. Amen. So, so, uh, so he may not devour some. So he can't find some, and he cannot devour some. Amen. And that's the group we want to be in, right? That's want to be. I, it's me. That's fine with me. Amen. I'll take it. I'll take it. So we see here in Ephesians 4, verse 26 through 27, it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Nor give place to the devil. And so we said this quite a bit, and it's a good saying to remember, is that the devil does not have authority in your life unless you give him authority. He does not have a place in your life unless you give him authority place remember we talked about how jesus had taken every reason every possible reason why the devil would have dominion and authority in your life and he removed it he took it out of the way amen he took it all out of the way he, so the devil has no authority and no right to operate in your life unless you give him a reason unless you give him that reason he does not have the authority to work to work in your life amen so but today we're going to focus more on this protection. And what I, really my purpose is to give you scriptures that you can take and you can meditate on and you build these scriptures in your heart so your confidence will rise. And you can be bold and you can be strong against the devil. Amen. You don't have to be, I'm not talking about pride because we're not to be prideful before the devil. We're not to be prideful about our authority because that too is a trap. All right. So we, our confidence is not in our, on ourselves, but our confidence is in him. Amen. Our confidence is in him as our protector. Our confidence is in him that he will do what he said he will do when we speak to those devils. Amen. All right. Praise God. So, <clears throat> so again, that's our purpose today is to build faith and confidence. Now, how does the protection of God come? Now, I know a lot of people think that the, put, you know, the protection of God is just automatic. You know, it's just, you know, I just do whatever I want to do. I go wherever I want to go, and I have the protection of God. Well, that's not entirely true, right? We know that, that the protection of God comes through faith and obedience. Through faith and obedience, right? We see here in 1 Peter 1 through 5, it says, And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So we see here it says, And through your faith, God is protecting you. Through your faith, God is protecting you. Now, what does that mean by faith? I know sometimes it gets a little out of sight, you know, gets kind of confusing when people say, do it by faith, do this by faith. You're like, oh, yeah, what does that mean? Well, that simply means, whenever you hear that, simply means to believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God is your protector, that God is your shield, and that he is 
protecting you. Amen. Not going to protect you. Not may protect me. Not someday will protect me. But that he is. He is protecting me right now. Amen. And when you do that, amen, his power, he protects you by his power, by his grace, hallelujah, by his anointing. He protects you. He keeps you. Amen. And then also we were talking about obedience. Uh, <clears throat> obedience is just doing what he tells you to do. I've heard a lot of uh, testimonies. This has happened to me just recently. I was driving down river. And, uh, and I heard in my spirit, pull over, pull over. And, uh, and I've known other people have told me stories similar to this. And I was like, so I knew, all right, so I'm just going to pull over. Right? I just pull over, turn on my hazards, and just sat there for a couple minutes. And, and that's part of God's protection. He gives you warnings. He gives you warnings. And, uh, and so what he's telling you to pull over, he's, ta- you know, he's, he's keeping you from a situation that may lie ahead. Amen? So the only way to, you know, a way to avoid an accident is to remove a variable. It's to remove a variable out of that accident. So if he's telling you to pull over, he'll speak to you and say, hey, there's danger up ahead. You need to do this. There's danger up ahead. You know, turn right. Don't go this way. Don't go to that store. Do this. No, that's part of God's protection. And so we can't ignore those warnings and then still expect God to protect us. And uh, I remember Lent Hagen has a great story along these lines that she was driving down. She has a testimony. And she was driving down in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she was trying to get to a meeting, and so she was speeding up. You know, she, and she got to a, one of the major intersections, and the light turned green. And so she's like, oh, yeah, hey, that's going to save me a lot of time. And so she started speeding up to get through the light. And, uh, and then she heard in her spirit, slow down, slow down. And she's like, well, why? I, mean, I'm, I can make the meeting. This is the great. I'm going to save five minutes off my trip by getting through this light. And so, but then she heard it really loud and inside of it. She said, slow down. And so she did. And so she let off the, let off the gas and she slowed down. And right as she slowed down, a car came right across and ran through the light, red light, and came right across. And if she had not slowed down, it would have T-boned her. It would have side, you know, sidetracked her. And she was just like hanging onto her wheel as this car just, you know, just shot by her. And so that's God's protection. So that's why it takes more than just faith. Amen? It takes faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. So do what he tells us to do because he's trying to protect us. All right, amen. So we have to open the door to God to protect us. And this is how we do it. We first open the door by getting in faith. Getting in and staying in faith. Believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that God is your protector. God is your protector. Now if we go to Psalm 91... Verse 1 and 2 says, Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, or will say of him, You are my defender. You are my protector. You are my God, and in you I trust. Amen. So that's what we say of the Lord. We say of the Lord, You, you are my defender and my protector. You are my God, and you are the one in whom I trust to keep me and protect me. Going on, verse 3, verse 4, it says, He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers. From all deadly diseases, He will cover you with His wings. You will be safe in His care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. Hallelujah. Now notice this here. It tells us how God covers us or how God protects us. He protects us with a covering. A covering. And we, said, and we saw in 1 Peter, verse 5, that that covering is a covering of power. A covering, of his, a covering of his grace, a covering of his anointing. It overshadows you. Amen. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. Hallelujah. The glory and the power of God that covers you, that keeps you safe. Amen. And so when you, when you have that mentality and you understand that, then how is the devil going to get to you? How is the devil going to get through that? He can't. He can't. Amen. Because you're covered. You're protected. You're shielded by his power and by his grace and you see this all throughout the bible it's always a lot in, in the word of god it talks about a covering there's always a covering a covering a covering all right amen so what i like about this here though is that his faithfulness will protect and defend you what does that mean that god is faithful to protect you 
He is faithful to defend you. He is faithful to keep you safe, to keep you from harm. Hallelujah. He will not neglect you. He will not leave you. He will not toss you aside. He will not do any of it. But he is faithful to protect. Amen. He used to protect his children. And that agrees with a, a New Testament scripture. In Second Thessalonians 3, verse 3, it says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. He will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Amen. And so I just want to go on and give you some scriptures here to meditate on, to build into your spirit, to confess them and speak them, and they will, they will bring confidence to you. All right? You will be bold. Amen. So Proverbs 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Are you the godly? Are you the godly? Amen. Have you been made the righteousness of God in Christ? Amen. You are the godly. Have you been purified by the blood of Christ? Hallelujah. You are the godly. Amen. And so in him, you are safe. You are safe. Safe. Amen. All right. Proverbs 4, verse 8. This is one I confess a lot. It's a great scripture. It says, when I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. Why? Why do I sleep in peace? For you alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. While you sleep, amen, even while you're asleep, the canopy is over you. Amen, the protection is over you. It's to guard you, to protect you, amen, so that nothing and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And there's nothing greater than the power and the anointing of God to help you, hallelujah, to, to protect you and to keep you from anything that would harm you. Amen. And that's great. And that is great. And we build that in you and you just have nice sleeps, you know, have nice nights of sleep. If I can say that right. Amen. All right. Proverbs, uh, Psalm 18, verse 30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. And I like this word <clears throat> right here. It says, The word of the Lord is proven. It's been tested. It's been tried for generations upon generations. It, it has withstood doubt. It has withstood unbelief has withstood the most, the uttermost attack by the science community. It has withstood, and it is proven. It has been proven. Hallelujah. And it still stands today. Hallelujah. And so the word of the Lord that is proven is that he is a shield to you, that he is a defense to you. Hallelujah. That he has not left you bereft, but that he is with you, with those who trust in him. So what's another word for this trust? Faith. Faith. So those who have faith in him, right? He is a shield to those who will believe him for protection. To so believe him for protection. All right, we got one more here. Psalm 28, verse 7. says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Amen. I am helped. I love that. I love it. Guess what? My heart had faith in him. I trusted in him. And I am, again, I am not going to be. I am right now. I am helped. Hallelujah. I am. Hallelujah. You have him with you right now. He is protecting you right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that's such good news. That's such good news. All right. And then, therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. All right. <clears throat> now, Next thing we want to go on to here is that not only does God cover us to, to protect us with his power and his glory, but his presence goes with us wherever we go, wherever we go. We see here in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, it says, Do you not realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? Do not, you do not belong to yourself. So what was the purpose of the temple? How many of you are familiar with the temple in Israel? Right, everybody, just about everybody. But <clears throat> what was the purpose of the temple? What was, what was the reason for the temple to be in Israel? What was its sole purpose and function? It was to house the presence of God. That was where the presence of God was to dwell in the earth. The presence of God did not dwell in individuals in the earth at the, before Jesus Christ came. The presence of God only existed in the temple. Right? 
And so that was the sole purpose of the temple was to house the presence of God. So what, what the word scriptures are saying to you is that you are the temple of God now. And that you are the temple where the presence of God dwells. And this is amazing revelation if you can get it. That the temple, think about that. The presence, the same presence that was in the Holy of Holies is in you right now. The same presence of God that was in the temple is living on the inside of you right now. Amen. You're not alone. We're never alone. The, pro, the, the presence of God is always with us. Wherever we go, He goes. We are carriers of the presence of God. Amen. We carry it wherever we go. In Colossians 1 verse 27, it says, To whom God was pleased to make known, how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you, the hope of glory. So you've got Christ not only in you, you've got Christ among you, in you, around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ in you and among you. Wherever you go, you carry the presence of God. Amen. So when you're standing against that devil, when you're in that place where your knees are shaking and you're trembling, start saying, I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. I have the presence of God in me. I have the presence of God on me. I am not alone. Amen. And when you, finish, when you, when you face that devil, when you speak to that devil, you don't speak to him alone. You speak to him together with him. Hallelujah. Together with God. And I have noticed when I have, when I have recalled this and I have and I've kind of fixed myself back up and I say, okay, Lord, it's you and me together are going to take this devil out, right? You and me together are going to resist this devil. You and me together, when we stand together, hallelujah, Christ and me shoulder to shoulder, side by side with all the power and authority of the kingdom of God, the thing ends quickly. The devil does not stick around. I'm telling you. It, you, you can just sense a, a, an anointing and a power that gets released when you use the name of Jesus, and that devil is not sticking around for it. Amen. Because it's not just you, it's you and Christ. Christ in you. Christ in you. He's with you. He's together with you. Amen. To help you and take you through. Amen. Amen. He's not far from you. I know sometimes it seems like God is so far away. And I can say, God, where am I? You know, I just kind of feel bereft here. But he's not. He's right there. Amen. Your feelings and what you, your reasonings, they don't define what the Word of God says. And, uh, and there have been times, I don't know, maybe you've experienced this, but uh, during times of praise and worship, uh, you know, uh, this is at Ramah. This is the last time it happened at Ramah. You just kind of get a glimpse of how close God is. And he's, it's like he, he's very close. He's very, very, very close. Amen. And I pray that God will show that to you how close he really is to you. No matter how you feel, no matter what it seems like, he is close. He's right there. You can't get any closer than in you. Right? He's, you can't get any closer than that. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So he's closer to you than any devil ever will be. All right? So, so bring that up. It's good to have. It's a good knowledge to have that when you're facing forces of darkness and these things, that you're not doing it alone. Right? You're doing it together with him. Even when you're praying for other people, you're doing it together with him, right? Amen? All right. That's good. All right, so let's go on here. We're almost done. we go on to Acts 17, verse 28. It says, For in him we live and move and exist. That is, in Christ we actually have our being. So in Christ we live and move and have our being. That's where we exist, in Christ. That's where you exist, in Christ. And wherever you go, you're in Christ. You, never, you can't get away from it. You can't escape it unless you decide to walk away. Amen. But you are in Christ. I love that scripture. So I, I am in. I live. I, I move. And I have my being in Christ Jesus. All right. It's John first, uh, first John 4, verse 4. We've quoted this one already quite a bit. The little children, you are of God. You belong to him and have already defeated and overcome them. Now, this is talking about the Antichrist, but also talking about all the forces of darkness. You have already overcome them. Why? Why are you, have you overcome them? Because he who is in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. Amen. So the one who is guarding you is greater, he's mightier, he's bigger, 
He's stronger, hallelujah, than the one who's coming against you. Amen. Hallelujah. We keep that in place. Keep that in mind. We have our faith in that. The devil's not going to come near. He come knocking, but he's going to go rolling, right? He comes knocking on your door. You send him rolling down the street. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So praise God. So the greater one. The greater one is in you. The mightier one. The mightier, stronger, the bigger one is in you. All right. Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. Why? Why will I fear no dread no evil? Why can I be so strong as be so confident? Because God is with me. God is with you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, no matter the deepest, darkest valley of your life, no matter what you're going through, God is with you. You can be strong. You can be confident. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried, for he is with you. Your rod, the God's rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. What does that mean? I, this is how I interpret this. Your rod means your spirit. Your spirit, right, your spirit protects me. Your spirit protects me and your word, they comfort me. Amen. Your word, which is to guide. Your spirit comforts me and your word guides me and they comfort me. And they both comfort me. Amen. The spirit and the word together keep you and guide you and comfort you. Amen. All right. So there's one last thing. Well, so the point we're trying to make here is that not only is we're trying to get a big picture of the whole thing. Right? So you've got God all around. You've got the covering and the power and the anointing. You've got in you, God in you, God on you, God around you, God among you. And we're not even talking about the holy angels that are with you and among you and around you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we come to a point where it's like Elijah up on the hill. Where, remember where Elijah was up on the hill and the, and the, uh, and the forces of, uh, what was it? I uh, forgot what it was. Uh, Syria or something like that. The forces of Syria were coming against them. And the servant of Elijah said, what shall we do? There's more, you know, there's so many of them. And Elijah said, do not worry, do not fear, for there's more with us than there are with them. And so he prayed that the eyes of the servant be opened. And he saw all the heavenly angels, all the chariots of fire that were all with them. And there was more of them with them than those who were coming against him. And when we as Christians begin to understand and realize there is more with us than those who come against us when we're trying to, when we're facing the devil, that there is more with us than there are against us. Because for every devil, there's two angels. And we're not even talking about the power and the authority of God himself. We're talking about the creator versus the creation. And the creator is way, you know, obviously is, is more powerful, stronger, and greater than the creation. So really, we, as a Christian, we really, there's no excuse there's really no reason to be afraid of the devil. When we have all this understanding, when we understand the truth, and we understand that, you know, we're devil the place that God has put him in and the place that God has put us in, there's just no reason for it, amen? There's going to be a temptation to fear. There's going to be a temptation to worry, but don't take it. Amen? Just push it off. Say, no, I refuse to worry. I refuse to fear because I know the truth. Amen. amen. All right. So one last thing I want to cover today before we close up is, uh, again, and our purpose today is, is to eliminate all fear and eliminate all worry. Um, we do see, and it's rare, it's rare that we see it, but we do see it, that sometimes Christians are overtaken by the devil. We've seen that before. And I don't know uh, if you have or not, but we have. Uh, and I've obviously heard stories about it, but it does happen, all right? And the temptation can be to, free, to be, get fearful and afraid and say, well, that can happen to me. And uh, really, in reality, uh, if we understand how they got to that point, then we can not be fearful of it and not be worried about it. And we can say, hey, you know what? I'm not going down that path because I know where that path leads. Right. So so we don't have to be worried about it. We can say, OK, that's how they got there. That's how I can avoid going there. Right. So so when we hear about Christians being overtaken by the devil, it's not something that just happened overnight. It's not just something that the devil just came in one day and boom, it, was, it happened. That's not the way it happens. What happens is it is usually involves a long process of time. 
And, it, and really, it falls into four categories. And the four cat, one category is, is that Christian, they don't know the authority they have. They don't know any of this stuff that we've covered in this series. And because they don't know that authority, they don't know their place in Christ, then they just let the devil do whatever he wants in their life, right? Just let them run right over them. And still, it's not instantaneous. It's still over a long period of time of yielding and listening to the devil that you can eventually get to that point where he overtakes. And now, I want to be clear. We're talking a difference between uh, devil possession and devil oppression. Okay? I don't know if you guys have heard that term. A Christian cannot become fully demon-possessed. Okay? Because when a person, when a person is fully demon-possessed, they are taken over spirit, soul, and body. That is a fully de- uh, uh, demon-possessed person. And that's the garden, that the man at the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember that? Where Jesus came over and he cast out a thousand legions, a thousand uh, uh, devils out of him. So he was fully demon-possessed. Now, what can happen to a Christian is the devil can't get into the spirit because that's where the Holy Spirit is. And the devil and the, and the Holy Spirit can't reside in the same place. But the devil can get into the mind and into the soul. And he can start uh, oppressing the mind and the soul and bringing uh, influence there. And so what happens is these people is that, that fall into this trap is, is that they don't put up their defenses. They don't resist the flaming arrows of the evil one, right? They just let the devil do what he wants to do. And when you don't, and you, they let the devil form thought patterns in their minds that take them down that path. And again, it's not instantaneous. It's years and years and years and years and years of doing it. And so, and since they do not put up their defenses, since they do not resist what they call, the Bible calls the flaming arrows of the devil one, they don't cast down thoughts and vain imaginations that come against them. They don't say, get out of here in Jesus' name. They don't use their authority. After years of that, it can eventually lead to that. I mean, and again, I say this is rare, but it happens. It's rare. So what do they need to do? They need to put up with their defenses, right? They just need to cast down those vain thoughts of imagination, know who they are in Christ, know their authority, and be fine. That's the third thing. Uh, third category is they don't maintain what they heard. They don't maintain what they heard. So maybe they heard uh, about a, authority about 13, 14, 15 years ago, and that was the last time they heard it, and now it's time to act on it. Well, the strength is not going to be there. Right? It's not going to be there for you to, to resist. And so that's why we need to keep hearing this. And that's why we talked about, uh, on the, I think it was the part four, is that we need to keep plugging it in. We need to keep plugging it. If you're in a battle, you know, get like the, the gas pump. You know, Start plugging your gas in and start pumping that, pumping that stuff in. Pump in the believer's authority. Pump it in. Amen. Just get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Fill yourself up with it. And you will be able to resist and stand and stand your ground. Uh, but if you're not in a battle, it means you don't have to go overboard with it, right? You don't have to go crazy, but just come back and remind yourself every once in a while, as you feel led in your spirit, to remind yourself of this subject, all right? And so the final thing and the final reason why some Christians uh, are overtaken by the devil is because they are not walking in love and they refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. They know they should repent, but they don't, right? They know they should repent, but they're absolutely, they have a hard heart, and they're absolutely refusing to repent. And this is why walking in love is so important for Christians, because it is absolute, and this is why the devil works overtime in this area, because if he can get us out of love, get us out of our love walk, he has free reign to, open, to get into your life. He has an open door to get into your life. And so that's why we have to guard our love walk with all diligence and all diligence. Amen? Because, again, it gives him an open door. Your authority will not work. Your prayers will not work. Nothing of the kingdom of God will work for you if you are walking out of love. And you know it. All right? And you know it. I'm not talking about this vague, you know, I wonder if that happened. No. You know it. You know you need to repent. And you know you need to go repent to somebody. All right? That's when you have to walk in love. All right? And so, so the person who doesn't do that, that one is, you know, again, over years and years and years, they'll eventually end up in that place because they can't resist them because they're out of covenant with God. All right? So here's the good news. Oh, I skipped this one. This is the last scripture for today. It says, 
We know that whoever is born of God does not keep on sinning. Now again, we're not talking about perfection. We're talking about work, walking in the light that you have, right? All right? And then if you have sinned, you know to repent, right? We talked about that. Amen. So, but whoever has been born of God guards himself, guards himself, protects himself, keeps up the armor of God, casts down vain imaginations, uses his authority, right? He guards the person who guards himself, and the wicked one cannot touch him. Cannot touch him. Amen. So that's, if you will guard yourself in this knowledge and in this truth from the word of God, the wicked one cannot touch you. Hallelujah. He cannot touch you. Amen. You won't go down that path. That's not going to be you. Amen. Because now you know. Right? Now you know. Hallelujah. So praise God. All right. I think that's everything the Lord wanted me to share with you guys. Amen. I hope and I'm believing that you are blessed, that you were, got something out of it at least so somewhere along the way. And uh, amen. And so uh, next time we will be on a new series or a new topic. I'm not sure, quite sure what that is yet. I haven't got a leading for it, but, uh, but we'll, we'll start off. Amen. We'll keep going. Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, we thank you for your wisdom. Father, we thank you for your, for your word that reveals truth to us. And, Father, we just thank you right now for your covering over us, your protection over each and every one of us, even those who are watching online. Father, we stand in agreement with them. Father, your canopy of power and your presence, Father, and the kingdom of God is with them. Hallelujah. To keep them and protect them from the evil one, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father, because you are their shield, you are their defense. Hallelujah. And, Father, we stand in agreement with those right now, again, all of us here together stand in agreement with those who are watching. And maybe you're dealing with the devil. Maybe you're dealing with some kind of oppression. We stand in agreement with you and we say, devil, you stop in Jesus' name. You desist in your operations against that person right now and you get out of there in Jesus' name. That person belongs to the, that person is a child of God. It belongs to the kingdom of God. And because God is his rescuer, rescuer and because God is his deliverer, he shall be safe, safe in you. Amen. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We give you glory. And Father, we just pray that you would continue to build this revelation in us so that we can become confident and we can become bold. And Father, and we can do the works of the kingdom of God that you have called us to do. Yeah. We praise you. We bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Amen. Praise God. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week.